Our next speaker will be Dr. Huda Smitshausen Abi Ferris. She is the founding director of the Khat Foundation and Khat Book Publishers. She holds degrees in design and design history from Leiden University, Yale University, and Rhode Island School of Design. She is a member of AGI, Alliance Graphique Internationale, since 2015. She is an independent design curator, writer, designer, and publisher. She has curated several design exhibitions and has published seminal books on typography and design from the, for the Arab world. She regularly contributes to the professional and the academic publications and journals. She leads workshops internationally and supervises research at the universities in the Netherlands. Please help me give a warm welcome to Dr. Hoda. Okay. Wow, that was a nice uh, introduction. <laughs> now I'm really humbled first by the introduction and also by speaking after my mentor, Kamil Hawa. So I'm really embarrassed to be talking after him. I, I'm not as eloquent and I don't speak as beautifully, but I'll do my best. Um, unlike Camille, I, I can't read in public, so I'm just going to speak normally and maybe just kind of improvise a little bit as I go. So first, I want to thank you for inviting me here. It's um, really, um, yeah, it's really special for me to be in Beirut at AUB after 28 years. Um, I've never studied here, but I was one of the first people to teach. And I was, um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. I think it changed my life completely. Um, I was, you know, invited by Leila Musfi, who was my first mentor and my first teacher in graphic design. And she kind of introduced me to the world of graphic design and we stayed friends and in contact. And when the program started, she invited me to be part of this wonderful program. Um, and I was very young, it was my first experience, but then I was surrounded by incredible people. And I am so grateful for Leila for including me in this, in this, um, in this group of in, you know, amazing artists like herself, uh, Cam, uh, uh, Arif al Reyes, Samir al Sayyid, Muhammad Rawaz, Muna Basili Sahnawi, etc. So it was, it was, you know, it was for me not, I was, I was given an opportunity to learn actually and to be inspired by people that, um, and to reconnect with a culture I didn't know very well. So of course I'm Lebanese, but you know, it's one thing to be uh, living in a country and another, and another thing to be able to work in it and to practice as a designer. And so AUB was my first school in practicing graphic design. So I'm going to talk about the politics of design and research and publishing because everything we do is, has, a, has, an, has an impact on, on ourselves but also on the people, <clears throat> on the people we, we come in contact with. And design is a very powerful tool. And it is political in some ways. And publishing is also a kind of political activist cultural uh, project. So I'm going to focus on that part of my work. Um, so again, like I said, um, my journey in AUB, my journey in, in research and publishing actually started here in AUB. Um, I came to teach here in the 90s. And we had at the time, you know, not only, not so much fonts, but also not so much software to even typeset uh, Arabic and, and Arabic, actually. So um, it, was a, it was also a moment where I started teaching and then with the discussions we had in the department, and Leila explained it yesterday beautifully and Samir as well, we had these talks about, you know, how do you teach how do you teach design in a, in, a context, in the context you're teaching it? And what are your tools? We didn't have any books. We didn't have any, not much fonts. They weren't such great quality. There was a lot of experimenting. And, um, and so these discussions, of course, come into your, into your classes. But also, I think I was really encouraged by Leila to, to work on this. And she even introduced me to my first publisher. And, and of course, one, doing one thing, starting something, is like, you know, you do it with all good intentions. But what is amazing about, um, about making something for the first time is it's always a kind of baptism of fire. You know, you make mistakes, it's grueling. Um, the resources were all over the place. Um, I spend a lot of time going to inf um, publications 
and libraries outside of the Arab world because I didn't know where to go here. Um, so it was it was it was interesting because the, something you do for the first time is very special, like a first child, but it's also always problematic. It's never perfect, and this this imperfection and um, and also intentions kind of feed into the work. So anyway, twenty years down the line, the book uh, was published. Yeah more than 20 years, but 20 years down the line, I thought maybe it's time to reprint it because it actually ran out of print. And it was a difficult moment to do because 20 years down the line, we are completely, I mean, you know better, this conference, today's uh, type design work world is so different. So it was difficult to decide, do we reprint this? Do I reprint this book or do I make something completely new. And I decided that it was important to reprint it, not because the information is, um, you know, it was also a nice moment to also make some corrections of things that down the line I know better now, <laughs> so I could make some cheating and improve some things. But I thought it was, it's important for me, what is important about publishing is not uh, only the information that you publish, but it's the fact that you put it out there and that it becomes uh, a document, you know, a historical document. So this represents a document of, you know, from the 1990s, like the 1990s period and a history of technology before that and the story of, you know, how typography became typography up until 2000. Now, what happened after 2000 is, of course, much more impressive and then you need Ten books for that. So that's that's um, in my introduction. Um, and then at um, in 2000, I moved to Dubai to teach at the American University in Dubai. It was you know coming from AUB. The comparison is um, I don't know if I should say that in public, but who cares? The comparison <laughs> is like going from you know working with a goddess and then going to like a, like a toddler who's just about to walk. So AUB is hundreds of years old, and AUD was two years or three years old. And it looked like a high school. But that was also, it had also some advantages. The fact that you come to a place with no uh, heritage, no burden, no, you could do whatever you want. So it was also a moment for me to experiment. And I think I'm also grateful to have had this opportunity to live in Dubai for eight years. It had opened my mind to... Like it gave me the space to do what I what I things experiment. Also, it opened my mind to being in in a situation where you have to communicate across cultures because my students were not all Arabs. They didn't all speak English. They came from different parts of the world, all the way from China to you know whatever, and that kind of diversity was an interesting challenge. And based on that, at some point, I thought we needed to create maybe a platform, a, a kind of community, a way to connect people and to kind of present also um, what is happening in the Middle East, in the Arab world, not necessarily just Arab culture, but in the Arab world, what was happening to the rest of the world. Um, everyone knows that, you know, after 2011, um, was it 2011? No, 2001, yes. I'm very challenged with numbers. 2001, it was the world was divided. You know, you had the West and the evil East. Um, it's now divided even more, but then it was like... So it was an important thing to show like what was happening. And I also wanted to learn. I think for me, research is not about teaching others and, and putting information, but actually about learning. And when I teach, I learn from my students. I hope I teach them something, but I certainly learn a lot more from them. Um, and so the idea was to, you know, when you, when you work, when you teach, you realize that you teach in institutions that come with their own curriculum. Sometimes it, the curriculum is totally imported from the, from, from the United States in particular, certainly in the Gulf that was the case. And you have to, if you want to change something, it's complicated. So the best way to do it is to do it outside of the institution. And so we started giving workshops in, with, in collaboration with smaller grassroots organizations in Dubai. And I've worked with many people that are here, like uh, Yara, KJ, <laughs> Lara, uh, Georg, um, Naima, Christian, like lots of people here. Um, fantastic talents. And I, I think that was very nice to document again this process. So we made publications sometimes. 
And slowly, slowly, I realized that actually what we also need is to make publications that are specifically targeted to design in the region because we don't, that, that doesn't exist. So first, first book we made, we had, it was part of a project that was uh, very nicely funded. It was a research project on typography, bringing uh, typography into the three dimension, into the three, into the environment, into the architectural environment, urban environment. And because of the funding was so good, we could actually, you, you know, make this very expensive book. And we thought maybe this is the good moment to start the publishing house, to start with like a really nice uh, kind of credit, you know, like an expensive business card. But as time goes on, I think that we all know that, you know, publishing a book, uh, you start to realize that publishing a book is a, is a big investment in many ways. Uh, it takes a long time to make, it takes uh, a lot of effort to distribute, it's expensive, uh, but mostly it takes a lot of time. And so the question becomes, what do you put in a book and what do you publish outside? We have now different platforms to publish and maybe we should experiment with, with, with our publishing platforms. So we started, we launched this idea of, of actually, of, well, launched launch our own uh, podcast to have conversations with designers because sometimes you see the end results of the work, you see what, what, what is done, but you don't know anything about the person behind it, you don't know the human effort, you don't know how they got there, and that's also inspiring stories. So we have also started a podcast which we called Chat Chronicles. Um, and then I'm just going to go very quickly through the books. So the first uh, three books were based on, on uh, you know, bringing designers together to collaborate on creating Arabic fonts. And we call them matchmaking because it's bringing cultures, matching people, matching skills, matching scripts. And uh, often, you know, we try to, I try to kind of collaborate with other institutions to make either uh, like a symposium about it, exhibitions, and then again, document the whole process. For me, speaking with other cultures is really important. Uh, and that's only based on my own experience and how I feel myself being in two places all the time in different cultures. And so I feel like when you do a, a project that you're going to invest your time in, you have to be authentic in the sense of doing what you feel is right and what speaks to your experiences. So the second ex exhibit, you know, ex collaboration was again here, your CKJ being really young. <laughs> Don't know where he is now. Um, he's still very young, but so, you know, again, it was bringing, it was also a, a way of looking at design as something you experience physically. So you have to, you have to meet together, you have to travel together, you have to do things, you have to eat together, um, and then produce work that is responding to the environment and to the experience. So we produced, again, uh, this was a very well-funded project, so we could produce also a documentary about the project where you know the, the designers actually got a chance to talk about what they did, why they did it, and how it came about. So I'm not gonna show videos because it takes too long, but you know, if you ever want to watch it, it's on Vimeo. The last project, which is, uh, again, still in the same thing, was an, um, even a more political project in the sense that we brought three scripts together that have, uh, especially the Tifina, which is uh, the, the one on the bottom, that has, you know, been banned for a while. So it was not allowed to use it. And it was kind of bringing these, the, 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 the Amazir, the, the, what is Lok, what is generally called the Berber cultures with the Arab and the Latin and the Westerners in one, in one language. So it was, it was bringing the, designing the fonts was a way to bring cultures together that have been in conflict. Anyway, I'd, again, publishing about this is really important. And, it, and then it, all of a sudden we are writing about um, two scripts that have been very poorly documented, which is the Maghribi script. There's very few publications about it. Actually, just one came out like a month ago that was a kind of academic uh, study because this is a script that's kind of in the periphery of the Arab world and it's always been used. It's kind of come up, become more trendy recently. But the history of it and how it's, you know, how it came about, who were the, the different styles. Uh, there's many styles of, of Arabic in Africa that are just kind of categorized as African, you know. <laughs> something else. So it's, it was interesting to do this research, you know, and I think that the designers that worked on it really um, 
also got into it. And, and we started from the, from the Arabic and then thought, okay, how do we bring the Tifinagh, which is a completely different script, much older, almost as old as Phoenician. And so it has more geometry, more simplicity, and then of course the Latin. Um, so then, you know, the process of, again, investigating, looking at, you know, differences and things in common, uh, trying to devise systems where there is, there is a, there's a room for each script to be authentic to its own tradition, but at the same time in conversation with something else. So I love what Camille was talking about, you know, this idea of designing, you know, Connecting to the past, but designing in the present. You know, how do we design Tifinagh in the present? How do we make a Maghribi that is functional today, that is not just historically nice and good to look at? So this is the three scripts that came out, and um, the book is still in in progress. But you know, it's 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 it was really challenging because we had to write about. Uh, the Maghribi, we had to write about the Tifinagh, which is again not much research done on, and we had to write about Spanish typography, which is also not very, you know, written about. So looking at the, the, the history of Spanish type and Spanish uh, calligraphy was very interesting. Anyway, and then there's a movie. And the last project I, um, but it's in the middle of right now, is um, we're working on a project uh, doing research on graphic design, women graphic designers from uh, not to the Middle East, but South, Southwest Asia and North Africa. So again, the naming is political. Um, and we are looking, we're, they're not Arab women per se, because we have people from Iran and other cultures. Um, and we wanted to um, kind of be inclusive and look at uh, not only writing the history of Arab graphic design, but looking at women Arab graphic designers or uh, um, and women designers from the region that have uh, historically not been. Yeah, I'm fine. I, it's it's my last project. Um, so. So so the the research is also to look at generations and to look at you know, uh, write about the history of women calligraphers which is uh, something that's not written about in, in our tradition. So there are women that were amazing that we didn't know about. So it's, again, one of those projects where I will uh, show you more slides, um, where it's, it's a journey of discovery. So to be inclusive, we opened it up also in the way we did the research. So the research team is me, Bahia, who will speak later. Maybe she's going to speak more about this project. I don't know what she's speaking about. And another person, Sukaina Hashem from uh, Morocco. And our idea was to use a, an exhibition space as a kind of platform for people to contribute. So we build an exhibition in progress. And the exhibition is basically a matter of collecting information, people sending us, uh, you know, we, we had panels online, we discussed some themes of the, of the project, and the themes were kind of decided on by each researcher, what they want to work on. So the first team was women, uh, making visual narratives about women issues, so women on women, which was which is led by Yasmin Taan. Um, mine was about border crossing borders and diaspora, and this idea of not working in a conventional way, and what it means when you leave your country, go to another country, and start to connect to your country at a distance, and you become maybe activist. You may you may not be able to practice as a as a traditional graphic designer because you're out of context. So you reinvent your practice. So it's all these like in between the liminal spaces of design, and um, and then the third theme by Bahia was on women typographers and calligraphers, and this is more like a, a listing of and it's it's easy still at this point because there's not so many women typographers and calligraphers yet. So you guys could be the future generation. Um, so the book is, is it, so we did these panels, we had these discussions and we invited people to send us information and to participate in making this, uh, this, this compilation. And now we are at the process and then of course we had talks and people visit the gallery and added things and there were schools coming. And so it was, again, the gallery was in Berlin. So it was again in conversation with the, the, the other, you know, the, the other world. So on the opening, for example, we had these walls full of pictures and one a friend of mine who's uh, 
Dutch living in Germany said, I couldn't believe the work I'm looking at. That is not what is our impression of the outside world. I know that we don't design for others, but I think it's important that others know what we do in this region. We know a lot more what happens in, in the Western world, but what happens, what they, they don't know what happens here, and they always have these preconceived ideas. And we all have preconceived ideas of each other. It's not that the West are evil and we're good or something. It's just that this exchange should be more open. Um, people should learn uh, about what happens in other cultures they don't understand. Like, you know, Salem was talking this morning, it, it's good to show people Arabic script um, so that they are familiar with it. And this is one of the, um, the reasons that I didn't mention in the beginning, is all our books tend to be bilingual uh, for one reason. It's not because people, you know, a friend of mine said, but yeah, you make the book double and so it's more expensive. And I say, yeah, but people have to see another script because that's where it starts. When another script is no longer this other evil uh, in, you know, thing we cannot, we cannot look at, then, then we are probably better culture, better world. Anyway, um, my last... Oh, I do need one more project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, my last uh, thing I'm going to show is a series that is like our biggest biggest baby in the in the publishing house and this is the series called the Arabic Design Library um, and the idea of it was to focus on one pioneer two of them are here with us today so it's really an honor to be speaking in front of them um, uh, so the idea is to focus on one pioneer from as many different as many different Arab countries as possible and to focus on practices that are also very different so that you get when you have a whole series of, I don't know, let's hope 50 books in the future, you have a kind of also a kaleidoscopic view of design in the region. Um, now we're talking about pioneers, so they're all from an older generation. And the idea at the time, most of them practice as designers because they practice as designers. There was no design, graphic design education. The only exception in this group is, uh, you know, I'll show you some really quickly through them. So this is an exception where they had a kind of fine art. Uh, so Helmi Tuni is a, is a uh, well-known uh, illustrator, book designer, Egyptian. Uh, who's prolific. I mean, he designed so many book covers, it was like really hard to choose how to, how to treat his work in a book that is small and concise. Um, Helmi Tuni was trained as a designer, but by somebody who was a self-taught designer and ran a, uh, I think his background was in theater or something. So the, young, the, the older generation, Nasri Khattar, was an architect. He did typography. He, did, uh, he tried to modernize typography. Uh, Abdel Adar Arnaud studied, type, studied graphic design in France and then worked in Italy, but he really, in his practice, he was also mostly a painter and a person that did theater and costume design. And, but his, his legacy is that he did start the graphic design uh, program within uh, the, the University of Damascus, the art, the art academy. Um, the Al Azawi is a very well-known Iraqi artist who also went into making posters and graphic design, and he uses lettering and a very free-form lettering in his own work out of political engagement. He wanted to bring art, and he was part of a bigger movement, to bring art to the public so it doesn't sit in a museum, it sits on the street. And he understood design. And then when he moved uh, out of Iraq for political reasons and ended up you know, running the Iraqi Cultural Center in London, he held a lot of printmaking and poster design exhibitions and so forth, and did magazines and so forth. So his work is also, he does, he's not a, a graphic designer, but he worked like a graphic designer and collaborated with graphic designers and printers. And of course, Estes Camil Hawa, <laughs> which I had the biggest honor to make, to write the book myself <laughs> for him. Um, that was also, yeah, I don't want, I don't need to say anything. He's already presented his work. But, you know, again, Camille is one of the founders of graphic, you know, the first graphic design studio in Saudi Arabia and Beirut. So that's, again, professionalizing the, 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 the you know, his legacy, among other things. Um, Emil Menem, who's with us also here, um, 
and he is, uh, we consider him the father of Arab journalism or Arab, you know, newspaper and magazine design, but he also worked on books and he's a painter by training. So again, how people come to graphic design then was a very interesting process. Salwa Rao Dasher is the only one in our series who is not a graphic designer, <laughs> did not do much graphic design, a few book covers, but her work is mostly design of, of, of 3D objects and the relation between her carpets, her painting, and her sculptures based on what she calls poetry. So the forms are not letters, but they are almost letter forms, her own letter forms. So this is kind of the, the series we have. So, And... Um, and then the next books are coming. So we're working on three books at the same time at the moment. So maybe they will be out uh, hopefully in 2023. Uh, one thing I want to say about these, these before I really end is that um, I'm, I'm a very shy person and not very sociable, but I really like working with people, which is a kind of contradiction. <laughs> and I also, with these publications, I also love to find I, I like to do the research on what, what are the people we want to write about? What do, what do we want to say with these books? How do we design them? How does the design of the book actually express the atmosphere and the sensitivity of the designer we're writing about? But I also like to think about how to, who to invite to write these books. And I've been doing that, trying to find, the, like matching a, a writer to a topic. Um, and I like to work with, you know, people that write from the region, so that, that the books are written by the people that are implicated in the culture. They write for, about themselves and not, because a lot of books, for example, lots of books on Islamic art and architecture are written by people from outside. And that's okay, but we should start to write about ourselves. So that's also the premise we have. So I'm very fortunate to collaborate with, like, very nice designers. Uh, we become friends in the end, even though sometimes the roads are <laughs> tough and bumpy. Um, wonderful authors, mostly women. So we have to kind of expand our series to go more into having more women designers in the series. And with this, I thank you and um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>